I love using Google Gemini. I use it every day. I go to gemini.google.com and it really helps me do a lot of teacher administrative tasks. And for example, I can just type in, write a lesson on figurative language and it will. Now, of course, that's not gonna be a great lesson because the quality of my prompt really isn't that great. One of the things that I get by going to maybe some other tools and I push create me a lesson and I type in figurative language is someone has pre-written some great directions. But what I lose is the ability to have this ongoing conversation. So make this more student-centered. I love that I can not only enhance my prompt through this conversation and have this cohesive conversation, but I can ask for other things as well. Make a rubric and a quiz to go along with this lesson. Now, of course, it's in the same conversation, so it knows what lesson that it needs to make a rubric and a quiz for. Now, this rubric's not gonna be the way that I would style a rubric, and it's not going to be the quiz like I would make. And that's where GEMS comes in. So when you are in Google Gemini, you can come down to the GEM Manager, and you can create a new gem that allows you to describe and add files for your style of rubric, your style of lesson plan, that you want it to be student-centered, that you want it to emphasize DOK2 and DOK3 level, and you want it to be a 5E's lesson plan. So then when I go to do a prompt and I say, write me a figurative language lesson plan, it's doing it with preset of directions. So this is something that you can do as a district, is simply create either a spreadsheet or a Google Doc that has some of these prompts that teachers are able to copy and paste into a gem at gemini.google.com that allows them to have higher quality output that's in line with district goals without them having to spend a lot of time doing prompt engineering. It could just be as easy as collecting them in a spreadsheet and then copying and pasting them over. I love this because this is in my own Google Drive. Instead of turning this over to a third party and not having a lot of control over the prompt, I have perfect control over the prompts when we collaborate together in Google Sheets or Google Docs. Also, Gemini is right in the sidebar of my Google Sheets, my Google Docs, my Google Slides, and my Gmail to help me all of the time. When I have Gemini for Google Workspace, I have a partner no matter the tools that I'm using, and everything is saved together safely and securely in Google Drive. I control where the data goes. I know where I can find it, and I'm not sharing it and locking it in outside third party. I can just go to Google Drive and find my documents. Easy to share easy to use. I can design my gems in Google Gemini. I can create a conversation about not just the lesson plan, but all the things that go around it, including student feedback, newsletters to parents, and whatever else I need to structure up for that unit, including that lesson. And then I can pin it. So I go to the three dots and I choose to pin that chat so I can keep coming back to it as I continue to use and refine that lesson and build on it. When I'm done with that lesson, well, I'm gonna do another lesson, but it should be cohesive from the previous lesson. So I don't want all my conversations to be separate. I want them to have a cohesive flow to it that builds on what I did in the previous lesson. And it knows what I did and it knows what kind of things that I like to include in my lessons and it knows my students. I can add into my gem or just put it into the conversation. My students prefer Roblox over Minecraft or whatever it is that they're interested in. I could give my students a survey and in Google Forms and I can put that information of them telling me what kinds of things they're into to help me to tailor my lessons. And if I put that into my gem, it's gonna be available that it's gonna bring that information up all the time. So then I thought, well, Yes, and because one of the cool things about using Google Workspace and Google Gemini is that you can go further. If you go to the extensions menu, you have the option for App Script. App Script is where you can yes and your Google Docs, yes and your Google Sheets, and whatever else you have. And you're like, but Alice, I don't know how to code. 
Well, even though I do, Gemini knows how to code. Let's give it a try. New chat in the active Google Sheets spreadsheet. Create Google Apps Script to create a Google Doc based on the text in column A of the active spreadsheet. I can actually code just with my ideas. I just want to describe the actions that I want to have happen where my Google Docs works together with my Google Slides, works together with my Google Sheets, and all the things that I want to do. And you can see that Gemini is going to create code for me. I'm going to copy that and paste it. And whatever error codes I get or doesn't quite work right, I take that right back to my conversation and say, oh, I got this error. I really actually wanted it to do this. And pretty quickly, you're building your own custom way to use Google Workspace in collaboration with Google Gemini so that you don't have to rely on what other people think should be your workflows. Rather, you can define them exactly the way you want them using Google Gemini. So I tried that. Now this is super rough. I'd made this in about a day and I just described here is my idea. So I'm going to come up to the extensions menu and I have educator AI assistant. Like I said, I just made this so please forgive how rough that it looks. I'm going to go to setup. Now I have this beautiful sidebar made in HTML. I, I know HTML, but I don't need to. I literally just copy and pasted it. I didn't have to do any editing. It looked fantastic. And I'm like, hey, give me my class rosters. So I'm going to go ahead and import my roster so it's connecting to my Google Classroom. And then I want to insert a survey. What are the things that you do when you teach? Because I want to capture these elements that when I create activities, that it knows what my teaching style is and my preferred way of doing things. And then I want to create a tool list. So you can see it's inserted a tool list. And I can set the formatting. Again, this is really rough. I'm going to play around with this some more. But I have a list of different things that I might want to do. And it says, act as a dedicated instructional coach, act as a curriculum designer, using the provided lesson plan details. I go ahead and create this lesson plan and export it to a Google Doc. And here are some additional inputs that we might want to do. Now, this is a Google Sheets spreadsheet, so I can share this list. I can add to it. And what's great about these prompts is you're not stuck with them. You can edit it and make it the way that you want to do your lesson plans or your rubrics. I'm going to go ahead and go to Lesson Builder and I'm going to insert a lesson template. So this is going to insert a sheet that's going to allow me to put in the details that I want about this lesson or activity that I'm going to do. So I'm going to title this the top of the world. My topic is quadratic formula, and I don't have the standard handy on me, but I really should copy and paste that in there. And I'm going to add in later the ability to pull these standards. We'll say that this is for ninth grade, and I want to DOK level two. And my notes are the students should explore the St. Louis Arch to discover quadratic formula be student centered. Okay, so I can now choose my tool from this drop down list and it is getting that from the tool list. So you want to add more tools, just type them at the bottom. You can change the names, you can change anything in here. It's it is a spreadsheet for you to do what you want. So it's going to pull that in there. I'm going to do lesson plan creator. I'm going to click import prompt. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because my tool list is really my generic prompts. And I probably have specialized those to be a little bit more specific to things that I want to have show up. But I might have some changes for this specific lesson. So what's cool about that is it's just going to copy that tool into this lesson builder. So then I can make some adjustments. Um, work with 
PBL, right? I can I can just edit these. And it didn't edit it on my tool list. It edited it specifically here. And even once I make this, I'm going to be able to copy it and reuse it for a different lesson that's going to have that same prompt. Again, it's a spreadsheet. Do with it what you want. I'm going to go back, show my lesson builder, and I'm just going to click Create Selected. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can see that it is generating. Now, I didn't make this little spinny thing. I let AI do that for me. It coded the sidebar. I just explained I'd like to have a spinner while I'm waiting for it to be generated. I also have a sheet called Document List so that once it creates it, you can see right here it says open the document so I can launch it. It's in markup. I'm going to fix that later. Again, it is a rough draft. But you can see that I have a lesson plan based on the prompt that I had in there. Now that's cool, but here on the document list, it's going to make it easy to get back to there, but it also gives me the prompt that it uses. So you looked at that lesson plan, you're like, mm, that wasn't exactly what I wanted. Okay, cool. So I'm going to copy this prompt. This is the prompt that it used, and I'm just going to come over here to Gemini. I'm going to do a new chat. And I'm just going to paste the prompt. Now, ideally, I would paste this into my gem that already knows about my class. And then I can start again and develop a conversation. And I can now ask it to make me a rubric and some student activities and design the handout and all the things that I want to have to go along with this lesson because I can take what I made in my tool product, my AI tool assistant, and I can, I know what the prompt is. I helped design the prompt here in the tool list. I modified my prompt to be, these are specific details. And it generated a prompt, it gave me a rough draft. Maybe the rough draft is great, maybe it's not. But I can just take that prompt because I know what the prompt is and drop it into Google Gemini or your favorite LLM and keep going from there and build on it and really get something that's really cool. And that's really the advantage is the flexibility with Google Gemini. I can also take this and put it in Notebook LM and turn it into a podcast and do all the cool things that Notebook LM has. But of course, it's just all the ways that I can tie together Google Gemini for education. It's a huge advantage. And don't forget about Google Vids also. I took one of my lesson plans, just dropped it into Vids, dot google.com and started a new video and it just made the video for me like magic. You got to love Google Vids and Gemini with Google Vids is amazing. All right, so this is a rough draft that I have here. I'm going to go back to my lesson. I'm going to choose a different tool. I'm going to do a unit plan creator. I'm going to import that prompt and you'll see it deselected the previous one because I already made it. So it's inserted a new tool, but I didn't have to re-enter this information. It remembers it. It's still there. And here's the cool thing. You can just add more inputs. It does not preset what my input should be. It gave me, like, I could do title, topic, and standard, but I didn't have to. I could have changed it from standard to uh, technology to use. I'm going to say Google Vids. And then... That prompt gave me a few other things that I might want to include. So my teaching style is student-centered. My unit goal is project-based. And my essential question is, can the St. Louis Arch fall over? I don't know. I'm just going to put those in there. Again, this is like a total work in progress, so I don't even necessarily like these inputs. But if you don't like the input, just change it. Um, conversation question. Have you been to the St. Louis Arch? And would you like to? Okay, so I've done that. And now I'm going to generate the selected. So now I'm going to make a unit plan creator. And obviously, I didn't prompt it very well, but... It's still, it's thinking about it. It's going to link to it here on this document list. And every time I do it, it's going to give me that add to the list so I know exactly where to find them. Not only are they just organized in my Google Drive where it's safe and secure, and I'm sharing no data outside of Google Workspace. And I love that. 
So you can see it's now added the second one. And again, I have the prompt that I can use that in gemini.google.com if I really want to take it further. I'm going to go ahead and open the document. You can see it created something. Again, it's rough draft, so I don't want to focus on that. It's going to get better, but this only took me a day just to get this far. And so it's really easy to take the power of Google Gemini and work all together with using Gemini in the sidebar of your Gmail, of your Google Sheets, of your Google Docs, to use it with Google Vids and Notebook LM, and to code custom applications so you get just the right apps that work for your district with 100% student security because they're your applications.